I was assigned Alison Priestley by the creator. Her antics, her havoc. This isn't going to go how you think it's going to go. I'm immune to social media drama. I have God on my side. I'm not here for clout. I'm not here for followers. I'm here to do God's work. Everything you do is just helping me in that. So keep at it, Allie. You do you. I will be calling that person's the work group later today because if it's not you, that will not hurt them in any way, shape, or form because they're not acting a fool on TikTok. But if it is you who is on that LinkedIn and now you're saying that's not you, that's really not going to look good for you. And then your employment will be notified because they will, you know what I mean? They're probably going to want my YouTube videos and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'll be clearing that up because I definitely don't want the wrong Emily C connected to the fiasco you've decided connect to connect your professional reputation to you've decided to connect your professional reputation to <laughs> is that you immune to tiktok drama <laughs> miss jubilee what the fuck did she just say i was assigned assigned it was assigned allison Priestley by the creator her antics her havoc to be aware of her impact in the world and weave it into the greater good by my learning and understanding and by what by what let's see what she says by what bullying the absolute shit out of me I jubilee found me back in august september october i'm not really sure when exactly jubilee found me i refuse to go back and watch all of jubilee's footage because it seriously makes me feel like so triggered my blood pressure goes through the roof this person has scared me since the very first video and i think i have the very first video that i ever saw of jubilee and it was referencing you know her spiritual psychosis jubilee is in some sort of spiritual delusion or psychosis she's not just like a believer in god you saw in the first clip she believes she was sent by god to do something in my life and i don't care if she doesn't say like i don't want ally dead she insinuates it over and over and over again she encourages people to take their lives from spiritual psychosis like jessica she said that that was a beautiful thing and that Jessica was posting a beautiful message the night before she died. Yes, that is my claim. Jessica was an amazing person who left a beautiful message on December 30th. The same day the original Lucky Girls video came out. That she tragically lost her life five days later does not negate that message. That people don't understand that message and want to transform it into a final message is gross, in my opinion. I made a long-form video explaining all of the signs and all of the evidence. It is called Lucky Girls vs. Mean Girls 2023 Signs from the Creator. I don't know exactly who you are, but I know you're one of the mean girls. And don't worry, because Gina i.e. Jessica, that Allie created a circus around her death, wants to be named. That's what my video will showcase. My video, I'm not releasing this video till that video is up on YT. So, go see and decide for yourself. Jessica is a lucky girl. She's been a lucky girl all along. Jessica is no longer on this earth, Jubilee, and you have no right to say that she wants to be named. This is spiritual psychosis. This is exactly what I'm calling out within this community, and they are encouraging people to die. I am the only one who did not make a circus out of that poor girl's death. That woman was in a deep spiritual delusion. It's no one's business what ended up fully happening that night but that woman believed that she was ascending as jesus christ and her best friend 
believed that she took her life because of that. And I did not lie about that story. But the fact that Jubilee believes that that was a beautiful thing and that she wasn't in some sort of spiritual psychosis and that it's okay for people to kill themselves. That's exactly why I make the content that I do. But Jubilee has encouraged me to take my own life. She absolutely has. She, like, what is this clip? Like the person who's who's like, oh my God, do I look, I look so ugly. You know what? I'm going to eventually tell you. You fucking look ugly. However, I'm never going to say I want you to die. That is encouraging me to take my life. That is insinuating well, if you keep saying they want me dead, they want me dead. Well, eventually, yeah, we're going to say we want you dead, but we'll never actually say that. We're just going to skirt around it and we're just going to try to silence you to the point that you lose your mind. And once again, Jubilee takes my trauma and my vulnerability and weaponizes it against me. She says that if I relapsed or I got to the point where I almost took my life, that that's because I'm too weak. And I should have called my sponsor. Not that I built something very real and Jubilee and a couple other abusers and psychopaths came in, decided they didn't like me. They're all under some sort of spiritual psychosis or delusion. They don't want me calling out their grift and they decided to hurt me. This is a classic case of a whistleblower getting taken out. I am someone who was speaking the truth, who was doing it in very blunt and frankly funny ways. I'm fucking funny, okay? (laughs) And none of them are. I'm sorry. You guys all think you're funny. It's, you know, if we're going to have honesty back and forth, you guys, you guys have, you guys aren't funny at all. (laughs) And Samara has to use all of my jokes. So Samara is the only person who's actually kind of funny sometimes because I know her and, and she can crack a joke, but the rest of you, (laughs) like, please just stop. I'm serious. And, and please stop acting hard too, Emily, like, please. And where is your rhythm when you dance? I, (laughs) I had to add a couple jokes in here. I am terrified of Jubilee Briscoe. It is May 13th, 2023. It's about four in the morning. And this is my official statement about what happened. Because this person is cyber stalking me, cyber harassing me, cyber bullying me. And this has gone way beyond internet drama. And everyone, since the moment Jubilee made her first video about me, has warned me that this woman is terrifying. And I have told her since day one, I am scared of you. Please leave me alone. And from what I found out, Jubilee, it lives in Canada. And Canada takes cyber stalking and cyber bullying much more serious than the U.S. And we're going to see how how serious the U.S. takes this soon. Because I'm going to make this a very big case. I can handle internet drama. I have been through internet drama. I can handle, you know, I have been through a crazy amount of internet drama. I can handle that. This is something completely different. Jubilee Briscoe is an actual stalker. I am actually scared. And she is working with this group of women. This is when hate groups become actual cyber stalking cases. And you guys committed real crimes. And they're all proud of it. And and I have all of the proof to back everything up that I say. 
every single thing down to text messages and phone calls between these people. This isn't just, oh, I have internet comments and things like that. No, I have the texts that prove that all of you worked together and most of you just admit it online anyways. So it's not going to be hard to investigate this whole thing. This is about Jubilee right now. And Jubilee, I will ask you one last time to leave me alone. This is month four or five or six that I am asking you to please leave me alone. When somebody says, you make me scared, that's, you don't get to decide if you're being scary or not, right? You don't get, just like you don't get to touch my body, you don't get to decide that my body parts are yours, you don't get to decide that I'm not scared of you. I am scared of you. I have been scared of you. I have tried to level with you. I purposely don't watch her content because it sends my blood pressure through the roof. This person is not only psychologically extremely unstable or is in some sort of a... Some, I... I'm not a mental health professional. I don't like commenting these kind of things, but this person is unwell, like in a, in a scary state and, and it hasn't changed, right? This is, this is clearly who they are. This has been going on for months. Jubilee is, is not okay. Something is very, very off. Just the way she speaks to me and about me and And her mission from God, she tells me all the time that I'm messing with forces I can't even imagine and that I'm, that I have a horrible mission from God because I'm a horrible person. I mean, and then if you're going to say I'm on whatever from God, God handed Allie to me. And then in the next sentence, she says, I want her deplatformed. And you know what I mean by that? I will continue and tell Allie, it's like, right, I've been very clear. What I mean mm-hmm. by deplatformed, it is not safe for a following, and a following is not safe for her. The baby simply move on. Hey, screw, you're not moving on. But if you want to have a one on one conversation, we could do that later when my kid's off at school or tomorrow at some point. Allie doesn't deserve to have a voice or be on the internet or anything. What does that mean? Jubilee acts like people aren't putting two and two together. Just because you don't say you want me dead, like those words didn't come out of your mouth yet, which I'm sure they have to other people, but just because you aren't saying publicly that because you know you'll get in trouble for that, you have to skirt around it. You have to say things like, well, you know, death isn't that big of a deal and we all have to die eventually and If you think that suicide is a beautiful thing and I tell you that you pushed me to the point where I almost took my own life and seriously harmed myself and you say, yeah, I'm not going to stop. You don't deserve an apology for that. You were faking that. You should have been able to handle my abuse. And I am not going to stop. And you are saying in so many words that you are sent by God to silence me. What are you saying, Jubilee? What are your actions? You don't get to act like your actions have no consequences in the world. Right? You are hell bent that I am doing some dangerous thing in the world. What are you doing? You want one person to be quiet. You are obsessed with me. A lot of people don't know that they're about to murder someone when they're about to murder someone. And it is escalating. I can see her, the speed of her speech escalating. I can see how her anger escalating. Her threats are escalating. And yesterday, for the first time, I actually watched some of her videos. 
I have only seen short TikToks. I have only seen scary clips. I have tried to ignore Jubilee. That's why I don't include her in a lot of these videos because she's actually scary. I had no idea that Jubilee not only made an entire YouTube channel about me, there's a YouTube channel called Mean Girls Are Sad Girls. And it's literally she started it when she found me because she says that she found me on her birthday. So I'm some sort of weird birthday present gifted to her by God. If you piece together all the things she's saying, that's exactly what she's saying. I'm a birthday present to her meant for her to fill out her mission to silence me from, you know, God. She can say till she's blue in the face, that's not what she's saying. That's what she's saying. And as her victim, she said boldly the other day that she's not a victim of me. And you aren't. And you know it. So, no. Jubilee said she is not a victim of me. And I want everyone to hear that. Because that's the truth. And that's the only honest thing that I've ever heard come out of her mouth. And as your victim, I am terrified of you. As your victim, you have not respected one thing I have asked. I said months ago, we can all talk about each other. We can all speculate on each other. We can all do this. But please don't say creepy things. She told me from the beginning that this was a God mission. And now she makes content about me. I had no idea. I finally checked out her YouTube yesterday because I was trying to block her from mine. Jubilee has... Does she post three hours of content about me a day? You're posting... You you have that much time on your hands that all you do is stalk me, admit to it, and then you're going to post content about me three hours a day. And it's, I made the mistake of watching that live she did about me yesterday. Go watch the video that I posted on YouTube yesterday about her, where I made the mistake of being vulnerable once again. And then go watch the live where she talks to me back on Mean Girls Are Sad Girls. If you want an absolute expose on someone who's not only in some sort of deep, spiritual delusion. This is what I talk about when people can be in spiritual psychosis and delusion and come off normal enough to get around society. Like she's not staying up for weeks on end. She's not like in the kind of like Gabby Hanna state where Gabby Hanna was just like speaking in tongues basically. And like, you know, she's not in that kind of a state. The state that Jubilee is in is even scarier to me because it's sustained and and when, and when she gets checked up on, she, they can say like, no, she seems okay. She's not okay. She's not okay. And this is exactly how people like Lori Vallow, who just murdered her children because of spiritual psychosis, this is how it starts. And Jubilee has a child and has made it very public that she has a child. Why are you talking about your child on the internet while you are also saying and admitting to being completely obsessed with this woman, being open about your spiritual delusion. You're not just like religious. It's not just like, oh, I believe in God. That's fine. I respect people's beliefs. This is different. And you're telling me that God hates me and that he purposely made me a horribly mean person and that my mission just sucks here. You are using, you are in some sort of spiritual psychosis. And she admitted, I don't even want to bring this up, but it's important. She admitted on Roxy's podcast just a few days ago. I didn't listen to it because I will not listen to a second of that crap. But they, she said on Roxy's podcast. Not only did they lie about Jessica and that and and do a ton of disgusting stuff and say that I would want Jessica to die. And I mean, it makes me so furious. But she said that she could not take care of her child and order food properly and do things of that nature because 
allegedly, she allegedly said this, but I saw the show notes. Jubilee literally said, I can't, like, I'm paraphrasing, okay? Again, I didn't hear it, but I know that she said something to the effect. And I saw comments where people were like, did you really just admit that, admit that you couldn't feed your child in psychosis on a podcast in the middle of this whole situation? This is how I know Jubilee is not okay because she doesn't think about what she's saying to people. She doesn't think about how serious it is. And I told her a month and a half ago, I said, this is serious. Canada takes cyber stalking seriously. Can you please stop? I don't want to go after anyone. She goes, no, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. Okay. They don't take si- They don't take you threatening me and then actually causing harm and then continuing to cause harm once I have a mental breakdown and you guys taking my, like, um, my income and stuff like you guys didn't ju- this isn't just internet drama this is real crimes and then those real crimes prove that you guys have had this concerted cyber stalking cyber bullying cyber harassment attack and i have said for months that i am scared for my life in multiple ways and if someone takes their life because of online craziness and bullying and lies and their reputation gets ruined and two years of their work gets stolen and all of this stuff happens because of a small group of deluded people who think that they're witches tries to destroy one person if somebody takes their life from that that does not make them weak jubilee literally said yesterday that because i have alcohol problems and because like i had a mental health crisis that makes me weak She degrades everything. She's going to take this video. She'll find a way. I finally blocked her on YouTube, but she doesn't care. I have blocked her on everything for so long, and she always finds a way to find my content. And again, if she had kept it internet drama, that's fine. She could talk about me forever, but she didn't. She didn't keep it internet drama, and she is so committed to continue to hurt me. And it does not make me weak that I have alcohol problems, it's actually a brain issue. I'm so tired of this. This has been going on for nearly six months with Jubilee Briscoe. You do not get to threaten someone's life, their sobriety, all of those things, and you don't get to say that you weren't a part of it. You just don't. And you use everything that I put on the internet against me. I hope that the clips show how scary this really is. But essentially, she found me. She claimed I was her birthday present. She claims she is sent by God. She has some special mission from God to hurt me or she won't be clear about that. So I don't care if Jubilee says I'm not going to hurt Allie. She already has. And just seeing her face throws me into a panic attack. And I have said that so many times. And leave me alone, Jubilee. There are months of video evidence, months of it, of me begging you to stop, of me saying I'm going to go to the police. Why on earth would she go on Roxy and Emily's podcast and say that she goes, sorry, I forgot to finish that story earlier, said that she was in a state of psychosis where like she was out of normal, the normal world and all this stuff. And like I said, I just saw the show notes and people told me and that she basically said that she couldn't feed her child. How old is her child? And if that, and if Jubilee can differentiate from the state that she's in right now, which is very scary and deluded, and she knows that she can fall into true states of psychosis where she's not going to feed her child properly or her child has to do the cooking for her or order food or whatever. She was very clear that she was not here. She was not capable of caring for normal things. And she felt like it was so beautiful, right? And she's like, if only everyone could see, if only everyone could see the world from this state, there wouldn't be capitalism and there wouldn't be this and there wouldn't be that. Okay. 
First of all, I cannot stand spiritual people who are talking about how they want to change the world and be so kind to everyone. And then they have a target like me that they are picking apart and calling disgusting and like, You just want someone to spew your vile, abusive shit at, Jubilee. That's what you want. What you found for your birthday present was a vulnerable, kind person, and you are a narcissist. I know that after yesterday. I'm shocked, but you are. I didn't think you were. I thought you were just deluded. You're an actual narcissist. I watched some of your video yesterday. Like, it makes sense now. Like, I'm your, I'm your, I'm your supply. That's what it is because I'm vulnerable. I give out personal information and you just eat it up. And everything I say, every single thing I say, she twists it. I have never watched her content before because I'm so scared. And yesterday while I was putting all this evidence together, I see the I tried to block her on YouTube and I see she's live about me. And I watched like 15 minutes and I about had an, I, I literally had to like go, like, I was about to lose my mind after just 15 minutes. I've never watched more than a minute of Jubilee talking and she is a narcissist. I mean, there's no other word around it. That is a narcissist abuser through and through and through and through. And I am their dream. And on the internet, she just gets to abuse the shit out of me under her guise and you can see it you can see her eyes light up Allie posted I've been waiting I have been waiting if I say that I'm scared of you Jubilee that means I'm scared of you you don't get to decide that I'm you don't get to say that I'm that I'm that I'm not scared of you and that you're not dangerous okay because you are and if you can go into those states of psychosis First of all, if you don't think about the fact that you have the cops being called on you right now by so many people because of your online actions and you're going to go on a podcast and talk about the fact that you can't take care of your child when you're in those states of psychosis, why aren't you thinking that through? You put people in such horrible positions. I wouldn't know you had a child if you weren't talking about your child on the internet. And I believe that people should not ever talk about their children on the internet. Why are you even talking about your child on the internet, especially when you're talking about me? If you can't see that it makes you look like really, really bad to post seven videos of me a day and talk about how you're about to send your child to school and clearly all you've been doing is sitting there obsessing and waiting and making videos about me and like If you can't see that that doesn't look good, like, I don't know what else to say. And I don't want to be talking about anyone's child. I don't want children brought into this. That whole thing that I would ever call CPS on people is such a lie. That is such a lie that was perpetuated by Carrie Ann and by Rolling Rosemary. And there is no proof that CPS ever got called on them because they didn't. And I would never do something like that. And I said that publicly so many times. So I don't want anybody's kids brought into this. People were trying to set me up with that too. But why the hell are you doing this, Jubilee? This is what's wrong with Jubilee. She can't see how how scary and dangerous her own behavior is on the internet. And when people believe they are sent by God and they have a special mission, they don't believe that they're dangerous. Lori Vallow killed her children and were in the back of a cop car. She, she's in the back of a cop car smiling because she did God's work. This is how spiritual psychosis gets people killed. And if Jubilee keeps escalating, if she keeps escalating, which that's what's happening. And what does she mean by silenced? That is the definition of not only supremacy and all of those kind of things, but why, who on earth gets to decide that I get to be silenced, Jubilee? And what the fuck do you mean by that? You need to be really, really clear. Because what you're insinuating is that you're going to push me to the point where I'm going to kill myself. And that's sure as hell what it feels like you want. And I went to Jubilee and I said, 
after I came back to the internet, she tried to talk to me. She tried to talk to me and she wanted to talk about Samara because she knows Samara's a liar. And I said, are you not even going to apologize? And she goes, you don't deserve an apology because she's abusive. And the only mean girl, Regina George, synchronicity, like the thing that's the synchronicity for you, Jubilee, this is a mirror. You are Regina George. You are Regina George. And I think that you probably think that you couldn't be that because you probably weren't Regina George in high school and you probably haven't had much popularity in those ways and yada, yada, yada. And so you wanted to be Regina George and you've always wanted to be a mean girl. And you've always wanted to attack someone like me who's funny and kind and actually did something big with her life. You are Regina George. You are the mean girl. And my heart breaks for your daughter. And I'm not bringing her into this to sensationalize the story or to um, throw any sort of things your way. I'm begging you to stop talking about her on the internet and I'm begging you to get some fucking help because if you aren't taking care of your daughter because you're so obsessed with me, there, it, <laughs> you are wasting valuable time with your child. Everything I do, you have to spend an hour and a half talking about. You spent three and a half hours making videos about me the other night. I know how long that takes to upload to YouTube, Jubilee. You, you're not, you can't possibly be, be taking care of yourself or your child properly. Like, it's just your obsession with me is scaring the shit out of me, not only for me, but for you and for her. I don't want to be talking about her right now. But after I heard about Roxy's podcast, I'm like, how, how on earth are you going to admit that you, once again, let's go back to that. She admits that she, something about how she couldn't take care of her child. She was in this crazed religious delusional state. It was euphoria for her. Please don't admit that on the internet if you don't want people to be concerned about your child after all of the behavior and all of the YouTube channels and this entire YouTube channel that's obsessed with that's committed to stalking and threatening me I said yesterday that like you know in a couple years I'll be on big platforms and blah blah blah. she's like and you think I can't find you she's like is that what you think is gonna happen she is committed to stalking me forever she is fucking addicted to me this is when addicted parasocial psychopaths believe that they are on a mission from God to silence someone, what's the next step? My platforms weren't enough. My, uh, me getting pushed to the point of almost taking my life wasn't enough. The Reddit thread wasn't enough. Me relapsing wasn't enough. You guys having that live with Aunt Karen and just destroying my reputation and buying bots and spreading these rumors about me that you know aren't true, Jubilee. Okay, sorry. I want to finish the psychosis thought really quick. Not only can she not properly care for her child during that state of psychosis, but she's admitting that she can go in and out of those states. If her normal state is this and is a very scary, obsessed, manic vibe state about me, that's her normal state. That's where she's not dangerous. That's where she's clear and coherent where she cannot get timelines right. She does. She cannot get stories straight. She cannot figure out how to like, she, she literally c- couldn't even figure out how to spell my last name on her whiteboard. Jubilee is stuck in a world of delusion and Emily and Roxy just feed it. It really shows how deluded all three of these people are. And you guys are welcome. You know, you're very welcome that you found each other because of me. You're welcome. Because now all three of you have a little echo chamber where the three, the three Doritos, (laughs) I'm calling them the three Doritos instead of the three amigos. 
can sit there and be an echo chamber of abuse and none of you will listen to each other and you guys don't care about facts or rationale or reason. So anyways, the three Doritos. (laughs) But if that's Jubilee's normal state, is this very scary, aggressive, cruel person um, that cannot respond to rationale, does not care about people's boundaries, does not care about having compassion for others, um, then how it then what happens if she flips into that state that she was talking about with her daughter where she's in a real psychosis and can't take care of her kid or herself? and she's not a part of the real world, what happens in a month or today if she flips into that state? She's admitting that she has another state of psychosis. What happens when she flips into that? If she gets to that point, what happens with me? If all she's thinking about day in day out is Allie Priestley, how to make her quiet. I don't care if she doesn't physically want me dead or like (laughs) she's all of a sudden, she didn't, she didn't clarify that by the way, until she, I said I was so scared of her. And I only heard this week that she's like, I didn't say I wanted her dead. I only suggested it. Oh, so now Jubilee is trying to be a little more clear because she knows the cops are actually getting called in Vancouver and that something's really going on now. Now Jubilee's like, yeah, well, but she still is not realizing how serious it is and is is getting like that live yesterday. I don't know if that's how she, huh, she that live yesterday was escalated. That's a threat. She's like, she will never get rid of me. I get messages about Jubilee every day and I have to ignore it because it's so triggering. They're like, she's actually scary. Whoa, what's happening? That's why I did not include Jubilee in a ton of videos and I didn't put her all over TikTok. I am scared of her. You don't get to make someone scared like this, Jubilee. You don't. So what this is my this is what I want people who are investigating this to see. What happens when she flips back into that state because she's already in a very scary state now and I'm her only thought? I don't care if Jubilee doesn't think she's dangerous. She fucking is. And if she, if she, fl- if she can go into states of psychosis like that, I am absolutely terrified. I am absolutely terrified. And there are so many people in this situation that are actually scared for their life, their business, their everything. My business got taken. My business got blown the fuck apart. And I don't care if people are like, oh, Allie didn't have a business. Yes, the fuck I did. Don't disrespect me. Don't disrespect what I did. And I wasn't focused on money. So no, I wasn't making a ton of it. But like, yes, I fucking did. And I worked so goddamn hard. And all of you have degraded what I did on TikTok to such a degree because you're jealous. You are jealous. And I have all of the proof, all of the dates, everything, whatever I don't include in this video, it's already all categorized and going to the right places. I am so tired. (laughs) It takes so long to put up all the receipts and all this stuff and edit these videos and watch them back and all this stuff. So if I don't have a ton of receipts in this video, it's because I'm exhausted and I don't have anything to prove. And the people who are getting this are also getting all of the files as well that have all of the proof and all of the clips of Jubilee saying all of these things and how long it's gone on and all of that. So thank you for your time. You can stop watching here. I'm going to say some things to Jubilee personally. So um, if people who are investigating this don't want to watch that I understand um but Jubilee personally (laughs) uh you are um beyond vile I I wish that I could say a lot of things um but the thing is I know that you can't hear it (laughs) you can't hear it you are not a person who can be open 
to discussion and you are the scariest type of narcissist. So tired of using the word narcissist, but the truth is that four or five really dangerous female or non-binary malignant narcissists found each other. Covert. I mean, I don't think you're covert, but you are one of the most dangerous narcissists I've ever come across. At first, I thought that you were just like a passionate person that, you know, was struggling with some sort of religious delusion and that you just get obsessed with things and whatever. That's really what I've thought this whole time is that you're just like not in a good state and that you're just kind of obsessed and that you're just, you know, like a kind of a you march to the beat of your own drum type thing. But I've been scared of you the whole time. And that's what I thought right? I just thought that you were in some sort of psychologically unwell state or that's just who you were. And that's why I've tried to ignore you and I've tried to not like piss you off and I've tried to not really include you in a lot of the videos because you scare me and I don't want to scare and I don't want to trip up and I don't want to trigger someone that I'm scared is going to come and stab me in the middle of the night. And I'm dead serious about that. I'm dead serious about that. I get scared in the middle of the night. I'm actually scared that that could happen, especially in if she's in a state of psychosis, right? This is what happens. People become obsessed. Fans that love people kill them. Juby has this like romantic hate. She said she had the audacity yesterday to say that she doesn't hate me. I think that scares me the most. That that actually puts a chill in my bones. That she can sit there with such a crazed, angry look in her face and pick apart every single thing that I say, do, whatever, twist it. I mean, I'm just a little puppet to her. I'm a little puppet. She's taking out some rage. She Something happened. She's taking out, like maybe her mother treated her like this and now I'm like her little puppet that she gets to just, (sighs) and my vulnerability and all of that, she just gets to (sighs) take it. And she found me during a really dramatic time. So she doesn't even know who I am and she won't even be open to who I am. I really thought that like, maybe, uh, like when she saw my videos coming back that I can be like calm and kind and reflect and stuff. I thought maybe she would respond with a little bit of rationale. No, she's gotten more disgusting and more vindictive. And like, I think it it makes her more nasty and that's the sign of a true abuser. They hate it. They hate when you are, when you can just say you're sorry Because if Jubilee wasn't a fucked up individual, she could sit there and say, this was my part. Sam was lying and I can let Allie go now. Like really, (laughs) after everything that's come out, I, I am a kind, rational person. I'm not a liar. I don't know how on earth Jubilee still thinks that I'm lying about any part of my life. This is the last video that Jubilee will ever fucking get from me, especially addressing her or anything like that. So I guess eat it up. I hope she can't even see it. I thought I could block people more on YouTube, but she'll find a way to see it. Um, So enjoy it, I guess. I really thought that maybe once she saw who I really am and, you know, that I'm not just like this raging person on TikTok, um, that she would have some sort of, I don't know. I just thought she'd be like, okay, yeah. Like, I I don't know why I thought that because I keep thinking that, like, I'm going to give these people the evidence or put out the story and they're finally going to be like, okay, yeah, I guess Allie was right. Or like, I guess we all were confused. Like, no one's, like, I, I'm not a liar, but this whole situation got crazy. There's a lot of depth here and a lot of deceit, right? Like, Sam lied to fucking everyone about everything. But the ultimate test of if Jubilee and Roxy and Emily are not abusive, manipulative narcissists, the ultimate test is how they reacted 
after they found out that Sam is a liar. Not only that I almost hurt myself and got pushed to that point. It's not shocking that none of them have compassion about that. That's zero. Okay, so that's zero empathy. That's abu- That's abusers. They don't care about the truth. <laughs> they don't care about the truth. They make up their own. They gaslight all of us. I'm so grateful I have so many people to like tell me that I'm not crazy because no matter how many receipts I give to them, it's like, whatever, (laughs) whatever. Like they'll twist it again. They'll twist it again. And I'm never going to look at their next twist. I don't care. I, they can all, they can all rot on that podcast. I don't like enjoy it. Enjoy it. Like seriously. And all I mean by that is like, it's going to go absolutely nowhere. Things that are made by grandiose, abusive narcissists don't really do well, you know, like not in the, not in terms of like actually like helping people and Roxy always puts out scammy stuff and AMW is a terrible person who loves to lie and Jubilee is certifiably, um, I don't know, and they all just sit there and listen to themselves talk it's not even like a discussion from what I've heard but you are abusive I am so sick of that word but jubilee like I said earlier go watch the video I put out about her yesterday it's only 15 minutes and then go to mean girls are sad girls the YouTube video she channel she made this whole channel about me to obsess about me and stalk me and all this stuff Go watch her response video to that. That is a case study in a female fucking sadistic narcissist. I'm on the floor. Like my heart right now is like thinking about it. I couldn't stop watching it. I had to stop watching it because I was like, I'm I'm going to hurt myself. Like, if you don't know what addiction is, Jubilee, I'll tell you. It. She thinks she blamed this all on me yesterday. It's when, like, I have an urge. My brain wants to hurt me when I get overwhelmed. I'm actually autistic. And my one of my coping skills is when I start to feel so fucking triggered and all that stuff, like yesterday, my body was like, you need to drink. Like, seeing <laughs> Jubilee and I didn't thank you. But like my nervous system is going overboard and that doesn't make me weak Jubilee. That makes me aware of how my fucking body works. Okay. And clearly you've never dealt with panic on this level. You've never dealt with alcoholism on this level and your brain doesn't work like mine. If you make fun of my, my disability or my executive functioning again, like it's on site and you will never get the chance (laughs) to get my eyes or ears on anything you say ever again. I have barely seen anything that you've said about me, so you have only wasted your fucking time. And now I finally watched a little bit of one of your videos. And now I get it. Now I get it. I was confused why you hated me so much. You don't hate me. You don't hate me, Jubilee. You hate that you aren't me, right? You hate that you aren't vulnerable. You hate that I'm actually really successful. You hate that I don't care about money. I don't care about... (laughs) You also hate that I'm complex. You don't allow for human complexity, which is not only immature and lacks all depth, but you don't allow for complexity at all. I'm allowed to not care about having followers and like that not be my focus and also care about the followers that I had. All she does is pick apart every sentence. If I say something like, yeah, I really cared about those followers, but at the same time, you know, like I'm, a, I'm allowed to have depth, babe. I'm allowed to be sad that you guys took my work. I'm allowed to be angry about that. I'm allowed to feel crazy about that. You guys committed a crime to silence someone. If someone came in and said, Jubilee, I don't think that you should exist anymore. I think your company is a joke. I think this whole Venn diagram that you have is is an actual joke and just took it from you. 
and said, yeah, you get, you don't get to have it anymore. Would you be happy about that? Would you just say, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm not going to do this anymore. Like get, grow the fuck up, Jubilee. The thing that I realized yesterday after watching her for even 15 minutes is that there's no depth. You don't allow for human complexity like at all. And that's also why you think I'm a liar, right? You're like, her inconsistencies, um, where are they? Because if you wanted to just ask me about the things that you think I'm lying about, we could talk about it. I have given Jubilee the opportunity to tell me multiple times. And I finally asked her point blank. I said, seriously, what do you hate about me? Can we talk through this? What is your deal? That was after I got pushed to the point of almost hurting myself. And she came back and said she wouldn't stop and got all, all crazy again. And she goes, you can reference my YouTube videos. Oh, so I need to put myself through hundreds of hours of abuse from you to under, you can't tell me in three minutes why you think, why you're upset with me, how I hurt you. Oh, right. I didn't hurt you. This isn't about you trying to help someone or help the world. This is you playing out some sick fantasy in your head and it's not spiritual. And the fact that you think it is makes it a hundred times worse. And people who believe that they are led by some sort of higher power to hurt another person are out of their fucking mind. Because that's all that you're doing is hurting me. That's all that you're doing. You have done nothing constructive. I am your little fucking puppet. And I'm sure right now you're watching this and like, yeah, yeah. Like someone else is going to have to step in and explain to you that this is wrong. You don't hear it from me and I'm not human to you anymore. You see me as an NPC, which makes you even more dangerous. But you don't allow for human complexity whatsoever. fucking ever. If I say I want my followers back in my, in my platforms, which I rightfully fucking deserve that and I have every right to be sad about that, even if I think TikTok is toxic, I'm allowed to be a complex human. I'm allowed to want my TikToks back, to deserve them back, to get them back, all those things. And I'm also allowed to be scared of having them back and to not want them back and to make healthier choices and to be confused about it. I'm allowed to be confused about it. What about that? I'm allowed to feel one day one way and the next day I can feel a different way. That's called being a human and I am a real one and you do not see me as one and that is why you're dangerous and you don't get to decide if if I am if if you are scary and you don't get to decide my feelings. That is an abuser. That is an abuser and I I actually want people to go watch my these videos between us because this is the last video I will ever address Jubilee and and you will see what a true abuser is and what people do when they use your vulnerability against you there is no winning with an abuser you cannot give them what they want that's why my TikToks weren't enough for them my me getting pushed to a mental health crisis was not enough for them right you are rational with them you ask them you know, what did I do to you? Blah, blah, blah. They can't explain it. They don't want to have real conversation. They can't act like adults. And then they use your vulnerability against you and they use you like a plaything. and they make you and they, they push you to reactive abuse. Like when I get mad and I've called Jubilee just fuming angry a few times on Instagram because she makes me unspeakably angry because she's abusing me and I'm being rational. And I am saying, I know where I mess up and I'm going to change and, and all of these things. And I ask her to be rational. And instead she makes an hour and a half long video where all she does is pick apart every word that I say from, a, from a perspective of hate. She, I'm, I'm sure she hates me more now. Narcissistic people hate you more when you're kind. They hate you more when you're authentic. They hate you more when you call them out. 
she probably hates me more now. And you know what she said in that video yesterday? But I just want you to watch her pick apart everything and allow for zero complexity. It's complete immaturity. It's anti-intellectual. It's no depth. I mean, it's sad is what it is. It's abusive is what it is. When someone comes off all pompous, they are sent by God. That's even scarier. And then they, instead of like her watching me in that live, what I couldn't even, I, I only watched 15 minutes and I can tell you, I know this from the bottom of my soul after being around abusive people, like, and then really deeply learning about narcissism and the brain and all that stuff. Like she cannot watch another person and say, oh, okay. And respond appropriately. Just like Roxy and just like Emily, they don't, they cannot respond to rationale their timelines are always off and they're the kind of people that when you look at them and say, no, that's actually not what happened. And they look at you with like that craze, like, yes, it was. I mean, (laughs) there are thousands of us and three of them. I looked, Docs the Podcast does have only 20 followers on YouTube. How did I get that right? I said, I was like, I bet you guys have like 20 followers. (laughs) There are thousands of us, thousands, and I will get my accounts back at some point and that will be glorious. But there are, and even if I don't, I'll rebuild somewhere else and I'll take care of the people who find me. But there are thousands of us and three of you sitting there. all, the reason I have so much evidence is because so many people who believed Roxy, Emily, and Sam, nobody ever believed Jubilee. Everyone's always been scared of Jubilee. So <laughs> if Jubilee has a couple followers, those people also should be on some sort of watch list. Like no joke, um, especially whoever their follower, her follower is that's in love with Two Turnt Tony. I'm sorry, all of you just prove. I don't want to ever hear that I'm a misogynist again when you guys all love to turn Tony, okay? And I am not a misogynist for asking Creative Ken if she manifested her fucking lip fillers. That was funny and valid. And I... (laughs) And she's never answered it. (laughs) Just snap three times and your lips will get bigger is it happening i should put on the instagram filler i wish i had it on filter that doesn't make me a misogynist that makes me a comedian Lord in heaven. Woo. <laughs> that makes me a comedian. Um, no. And I even apologized for that shit. And I've had fillers myself. And people are allowed to make jokes, right? You guys tear me to shreds. It's amazing that you guys think it's fine to tear me to shreds. But if I make one joke back, it's like, <gasps> Allie. Carrie Ann makes a whole fucking series coming for my soul. And I'm like, who are you, Barry Ann, you little MLM mean girl? <laughs> she, she, and she goes and buys my goddamn trademarks and buys a part of my life outright, bro. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I'd say you all are a little bit vindictive. I'm not, you, Jubilee says that I, she's not even my victim. But she has to do this to right the world. Like, go journal, honey. Go work on your Venn diagram. Because if it doesn't include everyone, your Venn diagram is shit. So this is how I know she's a narcissist, okay? She does not respond to anyone changing or acting differently or me being super vulnerable and putting my heart out there. And I'm so pissed that I was vulnerable again in that video. I really thought she might respond well to that. I have to look at all of them as complete and utter, like scary psychopaths. I cannot level with any of these people or give them a chance or anything because they would never do it to me. I'm prey. 
when I talked to someone from Carrie Ann's family, they were like, you are her prey. She is the predator and she will murder you. He was like, I can tell that you still have some compassion in your heart. Like, get it out. Get it out. (laughs) I have to look at myself as prey with these people. And that's exactly what I am with Jubilee. Like, it is so scary. She cannot respond to rationale or kindness or finding out that something was a lie. She doesn't care. That doesn't give her any more compassion towards me. She does she sees it as weakness that I struggle with addiction. She sees it as weakness that I got pushed to the breaking point, even though they were screaming that I was pushing people to the breaking point. If you think that it's weakness to be pushed to the breaking point on social media, what in the world are you worried about my behavior, Jubilee? If you see me as weak for drinking alcohol instead of going to the ER and paying thousands of dollars for benzos because that's what actually happened. I thought I was about to have a heart attack for about two weeks. I This is all right before you guys took my platforms. I needed benzos desperately, but I don't take benzos because of a lot of other things. And I was about to go to the ER after Aunt Karen's lives because I was like, I have to do something and I don't want to drink. And I could not calm my nervous system down. I seriously was going to walk into the ER and pay $3,000 just to get a couple benzos. And instead, I went to the gas station and got a couple White Claws so that I could read through that Reddit thread and take pictures. And then I had an absolute fucking meltdown when I saw the shit in that Reddit thread. And then the Reddit thread started rejoicing because somebody saw a White Claw in the back of my Instagram story and then I drank quite a bit and then things got really 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 fucking dark for me that I finally snapped when I saw they were rejoicing in that reddit thread about me having some white claws my brain snapped this is cyber bullying and you were so much a part of it and now you have the audacity to call me fucking weak I am so fucking strong you don't you you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't compare you couldn't imagine I came out of that I took a month off the internet I stopped the bloodshed I went and fucking took care of myself I didn't let myself lose my mind I could have ended up in rehab I could be in a six-month drinking bender right the fuck now and I could be dead And I made it clear that I have issues with all of that because I try to help people with that on the internet and you guys wanted to push me to that fucking point. That makes you fucking sick. That does not make me weak, Jubilee. That makes me so fucking strong. I pull myself out of the darkness. You sit in your bullshit and in your piss and in your urine. That's what you're doing in that little chair when you watch me on these videos. You're sitting in a pile of shit and piss and urine and it's boiling up around you and you can't even smell it. But guess what? Everybody else can and your neighbors can and now the cops can and you put out your own little smoke signal of acid rain. And all I have to do now is be patient because I gave you every chance, every chance. And that's not a threat in any way, but things are going to have to happen because you are not going to be addicted to me forever. You're not. You're not. And you're not going to pull apart my life like that. And and you honestly could have, like I've said, you could have kept doing that, right? Like you could have stayed anonymous. You could have just like, you know been an obsessed fan but you're not you're a stalker and you're an abuser it it seriously makes me cry is that is that how you treat your daughter when she comes to you and says hey this happened to me do you say uh no honey you're lying no honey god told me you're lying and no honey she comes to you rational maybe she asks for some attention Maybe she asks for you to stop watching Allie all day. 
Does she ever ask you for that? My heart breaks for your child, Jubilee, and I'm not the one who brought your child into this. You are. Yesterday I was saying how, um, you know, social media makes us all so toxic and stuff like that. And we were talking about it in the comments and yeah, like that's the truth, right? I'm not the person that I was on TikTok and I mean, yeah, that's me. And of course, like I did those things and yada, yada, yada. But when you pull away from it, you realize, you know, and the, and the how, like how toxic you're being and how, and these, these social media platforms really encourage it. And I was kind of like explaining that the other day. I'm not putting all the blame on TikTok or anything, but this is just the perfect example of her being abusive. I am being vulnerable. I'm saying I messed up really bad. I allowed the toxicity of TikTok to take over my life. I'm being vulnerable, right? And I'm talking about the Twitter thing and how like these algorithms want us to fight. And she's like, instead of just being like, damn, yeah, that's actually true. I'm glad that even if you hate me, Jubilee, even if you hate me, this is a normal response to that. Okay. I say something like that. Like I really fucked up. I messed up with my friend's death. Like I, you know, I was too addicted to TikTok and I would like anybody to Jubilee, if you started getting 20,000 views on every single YouTube video that you made about me, or let's say a million, if you started going viral or semi-viral or even 50,000 views, have you ever had 50,000 views on a video? Do you know what that feels like? Do you know what that does to your brain? Because it's literally drugs. It's digital drugs, Jubilee, and you're addicted to them and you're addicted to me. You're addicted to them and you don't really have a reason. I had a reason. (laughs) I had a reason. It was my job. I was helping people get out of psych wards. I was getting crazy, amazing feedback that people had never heard content like this, that people were getting out of psychosis like you're in, believing that God sent them to do some bullshit mission, believing that they're, that they're, that they're kind people when really they act like you. The fact that you believe you're a good person that does good in the world. <laughs> Jubilee said yesterday that she's like, me and my best friends all have a body of work that shows that we are philanthropists and great people. Only narcissists say shit like that and only grandiose narcissists like you. She was talking about her and Roxy and AMW. You guys all have a body of work that helps people. She was like, that. we all have this body of work that is so helpful to the world and is so deep and we have plans to help everyone except after we kill you. Only narcissists do that kind of shit brag about this grandiose plan that they have and I have a body of work behind me what's your body of work that fucking Venn diagram because that Venn diagram doesn't mean anything in the world if you treat even one person like me if you can't see even one person as a human you need to throw your Venn diagram away and you need to go learn what empathy is everyone's valuable except for Allie is that going to be your slogan That should be your fucking slogan. And you guys all have an amazing body of work. Where is it? And where are your followings? None of you are influencers. None of you know what it's like. None of you. But the perfect example is I said yesterday, like how toxic TikTok made me and how I explained how like the titter, the titter, the Twitter algorithm works and how they want people fighting and all this stuff. Like, this is what they want. They want people fighting over internet drama for six months. I take mad responsibility. I don't ever say mad, but I take crazy responsibility in that video for, like, not only what happened with my friend's death and how bad I fucked up, but, like, also, and I just posted it yesterday. It's only 15 minutes. You can go watch it. But just, like, how TikTok is crazy. They they want us fighting like this. They want Jubilee and I wasting our days giving these platforms watch time that's what we're doing we're not fight we are fighting with each other and it's starting to ruin people's personal lives because they all took it too far but really what we're doing is giving youtube and tiktok and all these platforms money and meta and mark zuckerberg we're giving them our lives 
and it's bullshit. I had to split my filming about this into two days, but I just got sent another thing from Jubilee. Like, she is out of her fucking mind. And months ago, she was going through my old accounts. I was wondering how this creepy account got, like, old videos of mine. And somebody just sent it to me. They're like, this is where Jubilee got a bunch of your old videos and, like, other people got them. Like, videos of me drunk a couple years ago where I'm like, not okay. I went through something so traumatic. And I know that you guys think that is a joke. Autistic people tend to go through a lot of trauma. And Jubilee does not understand that scenario. She does not understand what happened. And she doesn't care. From the bottom of my heart, Jubilee, you need fucking help. You have lost all ability to have compassion for other humans. And I am a human. You had brain cancer. I saw a video where you had brain cancer and you were talking about your experience and you looked like a completely different person. Are you actually a narcissist or did something happen to you during the pandemic? Because people can also just become super abusive. I'm so sick of using the word narcissist. Like, what are you? What you are is abusive as fuck. And I know that one of my biggest supporters, Frankie, has asked you to stop bothering her, stop talking about her child, stop bringing her up. She's sick. And you said that her cancer is not your problem. You have had cancer, Jubilee. That's the ultimate test that you have lost your mind. You don't have compassion for somebody else who has cancer after you have lived through it. Did something happen with your treatment where you... I know that cancer treatments can affect people deeply. What happened to you? When did you become this nasty? It looks like you tried your hand at being a little influencer for a while. That obviously didn't work out. Did the pandemic just snap you in two? Because it did to a lot of people, but you you need to go handle that yourself. I'm sorry that you've also been through a lot, but usually that makes people more compassionate, not more vile. Or are you just truly an abusive person that grew up with a ton of trauma or has some sort of personality disorder and you have always been like this and you're just pretending that, like, I don't get it. She seriously makes me shake, like absolutely shake. Like I'm... And here pretty soon, I don't have to look at another video of Jubilee Briscoe's ever again. And hopefully she will be getting some help because this is, this is beyond. I would love to see you try to be an influencer for one day, Jubilee. I would love to see it. Have you ever had 20,000 views on a video? Have you ever even had a thousand views? I used to have 1.5 million a week. And you think you know what that's like? You think you could handle that much criticism? You can't handle any criticism. All of these people, you and your best friends, those people aren't your best friends, honey. They're using you. Roxy and Emily are not your friends, hun. i I'm going to tell you that right now. They're not each other's friends. They're not their own friends. But I would love to see Roxy, Emily, Jubilee, any of you. Could you handle having an actual following? No, you couldn't. None of you could. You couldn't handle that amount of views. You couldn't handle that amount of criticism. You couldn't handle the pressure. And it would change you. I would love to see any of you take on that load and have it not change you. Because it does. And the parts of you that are toxic and the parts of you that, like, everything gets amplified when these things happen. And I just went, I just learned so much about myself. But none of you could actually handle that kind of pressure. And people who are actually influencers don't do this kind of stuff to each other. Because we know what it's like. Just like I will never leave a comment like you see Roxy and Emily and Jubilee leaving. Because I was actually an influencer. I actually had something to protect. And just because I made some jokes doesn't make me a bully. And just because I was real about things like kids don't create their own cancer with their minds... And I was pretty rough about it. And yeah, I was getting 1.5 million views a week. People were telling me every day that my content was saving their lives. TikTok rewards controversy. 
It trains your brain to be dramatic. It trains your brain like, and I'm honest about that. I'm actually honest about that. I'm actually honest about the fact that TikTok made me super toxic and that it brought out the more, like the bad parts of me were amplified. And I was doing something that I really cared about. You become like this martyr. It happens to people in social media all the time. You get 100,000 followers, 200. I did it twice. I did it twice on two different accounts about two different subjects. I would love to see you try, Jubilee. You become, you start to think that like you have to be that voice. You, you you feel a responsibility to help people. When I would see just this bullshit new age spirituality content about quantum jumping in the shower and things that just make people absolutely delusional, it got my blood boiling. I was not on TikTok. I did not come to TikTok to start calling out spiritual creators. And Allie Starts a Cult, for anybody who's wondering, is a joke. That account started as a joke and I happened to fall into the category of calling out online cults. So it happened to be kind of spiritual in nature that that was my, that was my name when I started. It was literally a joke. And when that took off, my passion for like what really happened to me in New Age spirituality went wild. And something amazing happened. And then you know, I ran into this group of people and this is what happens to people who tell the truth. They often get shut down and it's not going to actually shut me down. This is just a phase in my journey that's going to make me so much stronger. But that does not mean that these people don't need to be held accountable and that the next person they do this to isn't going to kill themselves because that will happen. And clearly Jubilee doesn't give a fuck. I cannot stand people who have zero empathy. I can't stand it. I When I see that someone has zero empathy, like, don't come fucking near me. Do not come near me. If you run into a person in real life who has no empathy, who cannot respond to rationale, who makes you feel crazy when you set boundaries with them, who turn everything you say against you, That is an abuser, and that's what Jubilee is. Whether she's a narcissist or not, I don't know. I'm so sick of that word. She's just an abuser. (laughs) You're an abuser. Can I say that 50 times over? I'm also sick of that word. But this is what abusive people do. If you need some examples, Jubilee, to help you see what you're doing, you know, I think it's good to have examples. If you're going to talk to me like a child... She literally talks to me like I'm a child NPC who just doesn't deserve to be here while claiming she's a conduit for God. I think God would be very embarrassed by your behavior. Last I checked, Jesus died for everyone, and that includes me. So if you believe in God, you don't get to act like I'm not a human, Jubilee. I mean, you can. You can act like I'm a human right into a jail cell. Because that's the kind of stuff that people who are in spiritual psychosis do. They kill people like me because they believe that that was what God wanted them to do. And I have every right to be fucking terrified of you. But I would love to see you try. (laughs) I am scrappy as fuck and there's no way. (laughs) That's a joke, YouTube. That's a joke. (laughs) Need an example, honey. Here's, Here's a good one. I was talking about how TikTok makes us really toxic and how the internet wants us fighting, which is true. The internet wants us all fighting. This is exactly what they want is people giving them money. All that most of us have accomplished in the last six months is paying these companies or giving our eyes, our attention, our everything to these companies, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and making them money. This is exactly what they want. They want us fighting. Nobody can really express themselves. It's all virtual. People don't see each other as human. We're, f- we're yelling at each other in one minute videos. We, you can't really express yourself in a tweet, can you? No, you can't. They want us fighting. They purposely send you content that pisses you off to like mess up your whole equilibrium and then they give you content that you like. It's like you are addicted to gambling. You are addicted to fighting. All of us, we are addicted to being addicted. 
everyone in this situation is addicted to the internet, not just me. Okay? And most people in the world are completely addicted to the internet. And I was being vulnerable about that, right? And Jubilee can't have one, this is the sign of a true abuser. She's watching my video back. And if she was a normal person who wasn't being abusive, she could take moments like that and say, yeah, that actually probably is true. Or like, wow, that's an interesting insight. And I'm glad that if she was actually like concerned about my behavior and concerned about, you know, thinking that I'm an abusive person, the switch from who I was a few months ago on TikTok to who I am now and who I've been trying to show I was on TikTok for a long time should be encouraging to her. I take a month off the internet because I almost died. I'm taking responsibility for the fact that I got pushed to the point of relapse. That's me taking responsibility. Did Jubilee put a drink up to my mouth? No. But did Jubilee's actions lead me to that point? Absolutely. It's a two-way street, babe. You also have responsibility when you push someone to a fucking breaking point. But I said, I'm not going to let TikTok drama and all these people drive me to the point where I almost take my life and I'm messing around with addiction again. I'm not going to do that. So I took a month off. That's called taking responsibility, Jubilee. Right? She can't honor that. She, she has to. This is what abusers do. They degrade every part of you. You give them exactly what they want. You're in a relationship with them and you're like, wow, this is finally going to make them happy. No, nothing makes them happy because they're not happy inside. No one who is okay with themselves or in their life or whatever is doing what Jubilee is doing. No one. And I know what it takes to put out that amount of content. She's not taking care of herself. She's not. It takes so much to record. I don't care if she's not editing and stuff like that. It takes like two and a half to three hours, maybe four to upload the video, the length of videos that she is. And you have to sit by your computer and you have to like, no, you are not taking care of yourself, Jubilee. And in turn, that means that you're not taking care of your child. And I know that. And that's not me being mean. That's me being real. I know what it takes to produce this amount of content and how much time she is taking up with me in her mind. But this is what abusers do. Let me get back to that story is they pick apart everything with my ex-boyfriend. It was like, like when I watched Jubilee's live the other day, just 15 minutes of it, I'm like, this is my ex. I don't care what you call the type of abuser you are. Like this is my ex-boyfriend. Like he, anything I said, If I was vulnerable, it made it worse. It's like, oh, I'm like, you guys really drove me to the point where, you know, I I relapsed. So I took a month off and she's like, oh, are you really that weak? You're just so weak, Allie. Oh, it makes me absolutely sick. You try to ration with them. You're like, uh, no, that's actually not true. Like Jubilee, I'm like, you you don't understand my life story. You don't understand what happened to me a couple years ago when I blew up on TikTok. Like you don't get it and you don't care to know. And I don't want to talk to you anymore. I've tried to reason with you so many times. Do not ever invite me to a live. I, you, you have crossed my boundaries for months and months and months and months and months. Stop. And don't you say, well, I invited Allie to come talk to me. I don't, I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to talk to an absolute psychopath abuser. I'm not doing it. And after what I saw the other day, never. Only the authorities will handle you, Jubilee. You and I will never speak. You do, I'm telling you to never contact me. Do not invite me to your weird ass lives. You do not get my breath, my time. I should have never given you the time of day in the first place. Are you kidding me? I should have never even looked in your direction, Jubilee. The fact that you ever got my attention disturbs me so deeply. Some little weird account that (laughs) you should have never had my attention in the first place. None of these people should have. If you build something real and people start talking about you on the internet, ignore it. I literally threw away my platform in some ways because I could not ignore Aquarian Music Witch. Because I was so hurt by people calling me a bully and all that stuff. Don't listen to it. 
you will implode yourself and your own accounts. And that's part of my my issue is that I responded to these weird small accounts because I didn't see myself as famous. I didn't see myself as an authority in this space. I didn't see myself as someone who really did something and who shouldn't even be responding to people like Roxy. I'm sorry. It's just the truth. If I have half a million followers and you have 6,000, I probably shouldn't be messing with you business-wise because you don't get what it's like, because you're desperate to get to where I am, because you clearly don't have something that people want. I'm not trying to be mean. That's just the truth. I shouldn't have been messing around with people with small accounts, especially in business, in business. And in other ways, I don't see things like that, but I have to take my spot in that way. And that was part of what, how I threw my own accounts away in some ways. It's true. Like these people came in and did something illegal and they should have never done it. But if I had never responded to AMW, I mean, maybe they still would have gone on and done something illegal and tried to get me off the internet, but it's that back and forth. And that's exactly why this needs to stop. And I do, and I actually take responsibility for the things that I do. And I can see that in myself, that me responding to Ashley Miller, me responding to Carrie Ann, I should have just ignored all of these people. They clearly don't have anything that people want. And Carrie Ann sitting there talking about narcissism while she's the most dangerous person out there. (laughs) Her and Samara are the, they are so unbelievably dangerous. Um... Yeah, I should have never responded to these people. I could see through them in 10 seconds. So learn from me, have some confidence, have some, you know, social media literacy and don't respond when weird little accounts start hating on you. Don't do it. Like these people are just so triggering and it, obviously with Roxy and Samara and all that shit got so crazy. But don't respond. Just don't. Sorry, let me finish this story really quick and then I'm done talking about Jubilee. But I was talking about how TikTok makes you so toxic and how like it brought out a side of me that I didn't like. And again, I dare any of you to hit 100,000 followers and tell me how it goes on TikTok and tell me that you're not like ripping your hair out and going insane and feeling so much pressure and all of these things. Like, uh, let me know how that goes for y'all. But Jubilee, instead of responding to that and saying like, oh, wow, Allie really does reflect or if she wasn't an abusive person, this is how she would respond to that. Right. Like, oh, yeah, maybe TikTok is making us all. I don't know. I don't know. Just she would she could have responded in any other way that she did. This is how she responds to me talking about myself making mistakes and how I was toxic and how I want to change my life and all this stuff. She takes my vulnerability. She won't recognize it she won't accept it it makes her more mad and she sees it as weakness that's the ultimate sign of an abuser that like she sees me changing and being vulnerable and admitting where I messed up even though these people hurt me so hard I'm still talking about where I messed up and that pisses her off you see it as weakness she was like she and she like stops her video. She's like reading this comment that's about how da- how bad Twitter is and how, you know, social media wants us to to be these things and all of us are addicted and she stops the video and she's like <laughs> Yeah. And you fell right into that trap, didn't you? <laughs> you ate it up, didn't you? I'm I'm sorry, honey. Are really you're sitting there with fifty fucking followers, two views a video, and it's you and Carrie Ann and one other weirdo who's in love with two turnt Tony in there talking amongst yourselves. You can't stop thinking about me. You spend hours every day making videos about me, and you're making fun of me getting addicted to social media. I mean, get bent, bitch. Like, what? (laughs) Yeah, and you fell right into it, didn't you? I had a reason. I had a reason, babe. 
And I wasn't on social media for years before this. I didn't expect to blow up on TikTok. I got addicted to TikTok during the pandemic, just like a lot of people. And then I went through something life-changing, which you think you understand. You don't understand that story for fuck all, Jubilee. You literally don't. And you don't get to tell me what I experienced in my life. That's another thing abusers will do is they'll tell you what you experienced. She really has the fucking balls to sit there and say that I am lying about my own life. And she'll say it until her head explodes, until she fucking internally combusts. Same with Roxy. Same with AMW. They will never just say, wow, I guess I was wrong about that. You aren't entitled to my life story. I'm going to get that YouTube channel taken down at some point because it's foul. You do not have permission to use old clips of me when I was drunk. And you don't need to be speculating on what happened then. And you don't know. And this is what abusive people do. They have to go in and pick apart your life and take words and take clips instead of what you actually, who you are. And they twist some crazy story and they're just going to keep flipping it and keep flipping it and keep flipping it and keep flipping it. But guess what? You're going to have to get unaddicted to me here soon. That is going to happen. That is what abusive people do. You take someone's vulnerability. I talk about my friend's passing. I talk about this stuff and she fucking twists it. She's like, oh, and she treated him so bad in real life. and that. You don't know anything about my friend. You don't know anything about his death. You don't know anything about the seven years that we spent basically married. You don't know shit. And the fact that you have to sit there and and I am your little your little abuse target? No. I'm not target practice for you, Jubilee. I'm not the person that you're taking out all of your anger or whatever happened to you to make you like this. You're not going to take it out on me forever. You're just not. I am not your little abuse doll that you just get to poke every single day and everything I say, you just me 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 me. That's all you do. Nothing constructive. Even after 15 minutes of a video of you, I can tell that you're not doing anything constructive. You just want someone to pick apart and is that how you treat your daughter? Because usually abusive people who can't respond to rationale, that's exactly how they treat their children. And usually they were treated like that. So if you had an abusive family, Jubilee, I'm sorry. And it doesn't make me weak that I have executive functioning problems, that I have addiction problems, and that I am vulnerable. That makes me so fucking strong. And you are so jealous. It is seeping out of your pores. And if you're not a complete obsessed psychopath you would be able to take a break from this situation prove to everyone that you're not gonna come and kill me and take a break from this situation don't post about me after this she can't i dare you jubilee i dare you to try to go focus on something else. I dare you to not respond to this video. I dare you to take a month off the internet yourself. Can you do it? Can you do it? Because if you don't stop, it sounds like you might get forced to. But I I, I challenge you. I challenge you, Jubilee. And if no one's ever told you that maybe you turned into an abuser in the last couple years, I'm telling you now. And if something happened when you got sick that it like hurt your brain or something like that, I'm telling you now. I mean, how can you how can you say you're not a hypocrite when you think that I'm going after your friends when all I have done the entire time is defend myself against all of your claims? That's all I've done and made some jokes. And you have create you you are the monster that you think I am. And I will say that I mean, I'm never going to talk about you after this, but you are the monster that you think I am. This is another thing abusive people do is they project. They tell on themselves constantly. You don't know who I am, Jubilee, and you don't care to know who I am, and you have zero empathy. And if you're capable of doing that for one person, you're capable of doing that to anyone. And God does not have your back in this. God is ashamed of what you're doing. If there is a God, you have lost all connection to God. 
if this is no god does not support i mean i don't know what god wants this is exactly why i don't like god i don't like talking about what god wants i don't like when i don't i don't this is exactly what religious trauma is people thinking that even me saying that this isn't what god wants i don't know what god wants but while we're i don't know if there is a god but while we're here on earth i know what you're doing isn't fucking spiritual i know what you're doing isn't a gift from the creator of the universe I'm on the receiving end of it. Am I supposed to feel like I'm just this worthless piece of shit for the rest of my life? You really think that God created me to be a horrible person? You really think that? That's what she says about me all the time, that God created me to be this horrible person. (laughs) I think God, if there is one, is pretty ashamed of you. What you feel towards me is not a spiritual mission, Jubilee what you feel towards me is pure hate. And I'm so sorry to tell you as well that Roxy and Emily are not your friends. These people are not your friends. And can we please, none of you are friends. If you all come together to take someone down, that doesn't make you friends. That's, you literally are mean girls. You found your little mean girl pack. You did. You're so obsessed with Mean Girls, the movie right now, and you think there's all these synchronicities to me. No, it's a mirror to you. You guys all revealed to yourselves who you really are. And you're the Mean Girls. That's the truth, Jubilee. And can we all take a real serious minute right here to understand how lost Jubilee is how mean Jubilee is, how deluded Jubilee is. And Emily and Roxy support her all damn day. They don't only support her, they drive her delusions. They make her delusions stronger. And if Roxy and Emily think that Jubilee is in her right state of mind, all of you, all of you need help. And Roxy has no business talking about spiritual psychosis. This whole group of people is trying to make all these websites about me and trying to provide real, real uh, resources for spiritual psychosis while all of you are in it. If Roxy and Jubilee, if Roxy and Emily support Jubilee, that's all like, that's why Jubilee was brought into this situation that's the spiritual part of this. Jubilee is not my victim. Jubilee has said that over and over now. So you are admitting that I didn't do anything to you. You're just doing this for fun. You're just doing this for sport. You're doing this to protect your friends. I wouldn't want friends like that. You guys will all turn on each other. You already have. Your little group has completely fallen apart. And the three of you who are the most deluded and Roxy has to keep her lie. Roxy has to keep this lie. So she's going to keep you and AMW close to make herself feel okay. Otherwise, Roxy's going to fall apart. Roxy has made such a mess, made such a lie, knows she's lying. I can't imagine being Roxy right now. I cannot imagine being Roxy. I don't think she has the ability to reflect. I don't think that... I think she just goes, 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 ignores, 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 ignores. She has to in order to function. If she ever sat and really let it all sink in what just happened and what she really did and how much she really lied and how she ruined her own little platform that she had and like a bunch of supporters, she ruined all of it. And she can't even go public now. You guys are so proud of that little podcast and you won't even go public on Roxy's account. Oh, please. That shows everybody any like if if you guys weren't lying, Roxy would be public on that account. But she's sketchy and she's been sketchy this whole fucking time. (laughs) I can go live all the time. I can talk about what really happened. I you know, I have nothing to hide. But those aren't your friends. And this is why Jubilee got brought into this. To prove that you guys are just mean. You're just sadistic. You jumped on a bandwagon to hurt me. And now you spend how many hours a week obsessing over me and watching me. And I did nothing to you. That makes you the biggest mean girl. (laughs) Get out of my life, Jubilee. Be gone. And... 
please, for the love of God, get a new haircut. (laughs) (laughs) Jubilee, I believe, now that I'm thinking about it, was brought into this situation to expose just how deep in delusion Roxy and Emily really are. Bottom line. That's why Jubilee is here. Seriously, because it, it seriously shows that Roxy and Emily have truly lost the plot, don't care about spiritual psychosis at all. They all find it fine to keep talking about Jessica, even though they know they, they don't need to, they shouldn't be. And her friends and family have begged them not to. Her friends are her family and have begged them not to. Like these three are just the light, the spotlight is on you guys and it's bad. <laughs> You guys wanted the spotlight on you, right? That's what you wanted. You wanted everybody to watch Docs the Podcast and what's happened. You guys have about 20 supporters. And if there's... (laughs) And I don't want to be near any 20 of those people because you all have to be pretty awful. So... I hope, I wish you well, Jubilee. Something really bad happened to you. Jubilee, I wish I had never met you. And this is the last time I'm going to say, leave me the fuck alone. Leave me alone. You got what you wanted, didn't you? Oh, wait, no, you didn't. You're not going to get me off the internet. You're not going to silence me. You are not going to bully me to the point that I relapse again or take my own life. And I'm going to make sure that you don't do this to other people. And I need you to get help. I need you to go to a therapist and say, I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this woman, but I need help getting unobsessed with her because I'm scared of what I'm going to do. I want to be involved in this. I don't want to be involved in your life. You're the one who pushed me to have to talk to the authorities. And it's your words that are concerning people, not mine. And so many people that are concerned for you. You wanted to join this drama, you did for sport, and now things are about to get really, really serious. And you can stop this now. You can pull back now. You can stop making content about me. You can take time off the internet. You can go take care of yourself. You can get some therapy. You need a serious intervention, Jubilee. And I don't know what's going to happen. That's the whole thing. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. But I put in my reports with the correct people about what Jubilee did to me and whatever else happens is out of my hands. So I wish you didn't take it to this point, Jubilee. I really, really, really do. I, I really do. (laughs) So be well, don't ever come near me again. And you did this to yourself. So fuck off. Damn. Okay. That is a long and intense video. And I feel like I just needed to process a lot in this situation. So thank you for sitting that for anyone who did. And I just needed to vent apparently. Um, I also feel bad like demonizing someone who is clearly like seriously not okay. And I feel bad directly saying this to someone who's not okay. Um, And if I went and watched some of her videos, I would be like, never mind. I meant everything I said. (laughs) I do mean everything I say in terms of just like how nasty she is and stuff. But this is exactly why I don't like want to be on the internet this way anymore is because like I don't know Jubilee personally. I just know like how mean she's been to me. So it makes me very triggered and upset, but I hate watching videos like this back and realizing like how many assumptions you're making about someone's life. And I don't want to talk about people's children and I don't want kids brought into this at all. And I don't want to be involved in internet drama. And that's exactly why I'm not going to do this all summer. But thank you for bearing with me while I get out these videos uh, for evidence and for my own like mental health and just to feel like the truth is finally out there. But I don't know exactly what happened to Jubilee or Roxy or Emily to make them want to hurt me so bad. But clearly they're all hurting and clearly like something really bad happened. And you can't like have compassion for people who are committing crimes. But I just also wanted to say that like that's very much a part of my mind as I'm watching this all back. And I don't like just like tearing someone down even if they've torn me down. And... This is exactly what 
like the overlords of the internet want is like people fighting and none of us really knowing each other or understanding each other and then we're not talking in real life and I can't talk to these people anymore because they've proven to be dangerous and people like Roxy won't talk to me and won't work through things. And so it just becomes this huge mess where everyone's just yelling at each other and analyzing these virtual versions of each other. And it's just a fucking mess. And (laughs) after this whole thing, I don't want to be a part of it. So thank you for being here. Have a great day.